there's no one definition of MS. In fact, this definition probably is a, an amalgamation of a number of definitions that, I, that I've found. So MS is a, I'll, I'll say it and I'll go, I'm going to go through it, as I said, line by line and explain it. So MS is a chronic, uh, unpredictable autoimmune disease uh, of the central nervous system. And it's characterized pathologically by inflammation, by demyelination, by axonal degeneration, and clinically by episodes of relapsing, remitting focal neurological deficit, and after a period of time by insidious deterioration. So the first two things is, is it's a chronic disease, so meaning that's a disease not over a few hours or a few days, but it's a disease which affects you for, for life. It goes over, over years. It's unpredictable, and we, all those who, who have MS will understand that unpredictable nature. Um, when your next relapse is to be, it could be six months, it could be a year, it could be several years. There's an unpredictable nature to the, to the disease. It's an autoimmune disorder. So here's another, another definition, uh, unfortunately. So it's, a, it's an illness, an autoimmune, an autoimmune disease is an illness that occurs when the body tissues are attacked by its own immune system. So your immune system is there to fight things which are foreign to you, like bacteria and viruses. But to do that, it needs to recognize you and distinguish you from what is foreign to you. And for some reason, the immune system gets this wrong in autoimmune diseases. So the immune system is a complex organization in the body, and it's designed normally to seek out and destroy invaders of the body, including infectious agents. And patients with autoimmune disease frequently have an unusual antibody circulating in their blood that target their own body tissue. So the immune system um, is made up mainly of the cells which circulate in, in your blood. And they are, in, to most cases, in the normal circumstances, separated from your, from your brain by what we call the blood-brain barrier. Um, so those cells don't get access to your brain in an easy, uh, in easy fashion. But in MS, the blood-brain barrier becomes a bit leaky. The cells, which are normally seen in the circulation, move into the brain. And it, as an autoimmune disease, it attacks part of the brain. So coming back to that definition again, we talked about it's an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system. So what is the central nervous system? Well, on the left, you can see um, uh, an MRI scan of brain and spinal cord. And the brain and spinal cord is what we call the central nervous system. And MS affects um, only the central nervous system. There is, as mentioned by the previous speaker, a, another part of the nervous system we'll call the peripheral nervous system. That's actually the nerves that come off your spinal cord and go out to your arms and legs and to your bladder, bladder function and to your respiratory function, your heart, your bowels and so forth. And that's called your peripheral nervous system. And the MS does not affect those nerves. It's a, a disease of the central nervous system and the central nervous system alone. So it doesn't affect your, your muscles, for example. The central nervous system is made up of two main components, it's made up of what we call gray matter and, and white matter. And here you can see um, pathological specimens on the left and a corresponding MRI picture on the right. And you can see that they, they're very similar. So our imaging today is, is, is very detailed. You can see the gray and white matter. The gray matter is made up, uh, I should see that down here below, the, uh, unfortunately I don't have a po pointer, but below you see a single nerve. And it's made up of a cell body, it's made up of an axon, and that then communicates with another nerve. And the axon is, is as mentioned, it's like a wire, and it's surrounded by myelin or insulating material. The gray matter of the brain is made up largely of the cell body. And the white matter is made up largely of the, the wire or the axons with its myelin. And MS predominantly affects the myelin and the white matter of the, of the brain. So uh, MS is a chronic, unpredictable autoimmune disease of the central nervous system. It's characterized pathologically by inflammation, which is what that autoimmune process, the immune cells, passing over the blood-brain barrier into the brain and attacking the, the, the central nervous system. It's characterized by demyelination and by axonal degeneration. So you've seen this uh, diagram on the left-hand side, the cells crossing the blood-brain barrier into the brain. We've seen the normal axon, the normal uh, cell body, with its cell body, its axon, its myelins. And that immune system, that autoimmune system, attacks the myelin surrounding the axon. And in so doing, it interferes with the, the normal impulse down the nerve and stops it. And that's why you get symptoms of MS. 
And then over time, the myelin will start to repair itself. And that's why your symptoms will gradually settle down. As the inflammation settles down, it allows the nerve to reheal or regenerate the myelin. And your symptoms then will improve. They may go away completely or they may go away partially. But as mentioned, this, with recurrent attacks of the uh, autoimmune process, the nerve can get irreparably damaged. And then you get degeneration of the nerve, which is the last, which is the one at the very bottom, where the nerve actually dies and then no, no longer functions. There's no longer a, a nerve impulse. And that's where you get a, a permanent symptom, a symptom which doesn't go away. So what's an acute relapse? We call it an exacerbation or a flare-up or a clinical event or an acute at attack. It all means the same thing. So a relapse is a collection of new symptoms or it's, uh, old symptoms that have reappeared because of new inflammation and, and because of demyelination, that stripping of the myelin in the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. And it occurs in the absence of fever infection and usually occurs over a short uh, uh, period of hours or days. So that inflammatory process come, doesn't come on instantaneously. It takes a period of time for it to cross the brain barrier, to get into the brain, to strip away the myelin. So it takes hours to days to do that. So, so transient symptoms are not generally a reflection of new areas of inflammation, but symptoms which come on over hours and days and usually last more than 24 hours, in many cases last weeks, is a, a symptom of, of a relapse. We have to try and distinguish that in the clinic from what we call pseudorelapses. And a pseudorelapse is a flare of an old symptom, um, which may be due to infection, stress, or a rise in body temperature. So these pseudorelapses can be treated by tackling the cause of what has caused a pseudorelapse. As soon as the cause goes away, the symptoms disappear, and no permanent harm occurs. So in that situation, you have, as, this, as you've been mentioned before, there's a scarring uh, in the brain. Under normal circumstances, the conduction through that scarring is enough for you to function normally or near normally. But with a change in, in body temperature, which can be from having a hot bath, having an exercise, having an infection, the conduction through that scarring then slows down and you develop some of the old symptoms that you had previously. And nothing new has happened. There's been no new inflammation, no new autoimmune disease, but you develop new symptoms or recurrent of old symptoms, which is a, a pseudo-relapse. And clearly we need to treat these differently. The relapse we may treat with steroids acutely, we may change your disease-modifying treatments to more aggressive treatments. The pseudo-relapse we need to treat the underlying cause, the infection, the stress, or the, or the, or the uh, increase in temp body temperature. So <coughs> you all know that there's a different sort of patterns to MS. And the most common pattern is what we call relapsing emitting pattern, which is the pattern at the very bottom. So you get the autoimmune disease doesn't occur, uh, at least in a clinical fashion, uh, continuously. There's sort of flare-ups. It seems to flare up and then die down and then rest for a period of time and then flare up again. And that gives this pattern of, of new symptoms reoccurring and then settling and then a period of stability where nothing happens and another flare-up and so forth. That's called relapsing emitting MS. And most patients, about 80% of patients, will present in that way. Some patients, after years of having relapsing emitting MS, will develop a more gradual, insidious uh, form of MS. And that's due to that degenerative uh, nature of, of the disease, where the nerves have become exhausted and no longer can repair and have died. And therefore, there's a permanent deficit. And that tends to occur more gradually over a period of time, over months and years, rather than over hours and days. Some patients never have relapses, they just have that gradual change, and that's called prime progressive MS. And some patients have a combination of the two from the very start, where you have a progressive clinical course, and on top of that you have relapsing emitting. So you have progressive relapsing MS. Here's a, uh, an MRI scan. Uh, so the top MRI scan <coughs> is an axial cut through the brain. So, um, and you can see there's a, a large white area to the left of, of the scan. So that's an area of inflammation. Those cells that were in the blood, across the blood-brain barrier, have got into the brain and are attacking the, the central nervous system and stripping away the myelin. And you can see that three months later, that inflammation has largely gone. It's disappeared. 
But if you can see on the right-hand scan, the, the bottom one on the right, there's a new area um, um, more frontally or um, more to the front. And this, uh, ref this will be reflected by new symptoms. Not in all cases, not all relapses will produce symptoms, but some of the relapses will produce symptoms, depending on where the lesions are in your brain. Some areas of the brain are very uh, symptom sen sensitive, and some areas of the brain are, are, very, are not very s symptom sen sensitive. This reflects the degenerative aspect of MS. When those nerves are permanently damaged and they die, you get a, a, an atrophy of the brain, a shrinking of the brain, a loss of brain tissue. And these are, this is the same patient, but over a period of, of years. And you can see that the central, what we call ventricles, these large black areas, which are usually filled with fluid, usually relatively small in, in young patients, uh, become larger and larger as the brain has, has shrunk away. And you can see also on the outside that the brain is enfolded on itself and those infolds become wider and, um, as the brain uh, atrophies. So I'm hoping that by giving a definition and explaining that definition, I've explained to some degree how your symptoms will develop. They develop because of acute relapses and depending on what part of the central nervous system is affected will determine what symptom you might get. And clearly your central nervous system controls almost every aspect of, of your, your body. And therefore you can get a, a large array of symptoms developing. And whether they develop acutely or whether they develop more gradually will depend on whether it's due to new inflammation, an acute relapse, or whether it's a more degenerative process, a more gradual dying back of the nerves. Um, I think it's really important uh, to remember that even if, you're, uh, if you have MS, not all symptoms uh, will necessarily be caused by MS. And therefore, you should always speak to your doctor if you feel uh, unwell, just as uh, you might do before your diagnosis. Examples of this, uh, f f fatigue is a very common MS symptom, but it may be due, for example, to anemia or thyroid disease. Pain in the lower back, radiating to your legs and associated with weakness, numbness and tingling may be due to sciatica rather than due to your MS, for example. Reduced vision in both eyes may be more likely due to a refractory error and require uh, glasses. A change in bowel habits, nausea, vomiting, weight loss should always be investigated for other causes um, and not just simply put down to your MS. Some symptoms which are not associated with MS, at least not directly associated with MS, would include things like uh, headache and neck pain, lower back pain, joint uh, pain and stiffness or swelling, weight loss, stress, urinary incontinence, deafness, earache, psychosis, shortness of breath. The list is not exhaust exhaustive. Um, uh, some symptoms which are rarely associated with MS, especially in the early stages of the disease, include cognitive impairments, seizures and sudden loss of function. It's not to say that these things don't occur in some patients at an early stage, but in, in general they occur, late, if they're going to occur, they occur uh, late on in the course of the disease.